Hi, this is section 5.5 .5 of Larson Hostetler 10.4 out of Stitt Ziegert. And the notes that we're looking at are multiple angles and product of some formulas. Now, there's a lot of formulas here, and they're pretty daunting. Some of them we want you to memorize, and some of them I'm just going to show to you just so that you've seen them before, I guess, is the main thing. And possibly if I give one to you on the test, you should be able to just use a formula in general and try to sort it out. So that's what we're looking at. So we had some in 5.4. We had the sum and difference ones. Uh, these were written with a plus minus, plus minus, but I put the minus over here just to sort it out. And notice that the cosine switches over on the sine. And so just be aware of that. And then be just, just memorize those, understand them so you're ready for the test with that. What we're going to get into now are double angle formulas. You need to memorize those. And then power reducing formulas. Uh, like I said, just look at them and see. Half angle might be a little bit more prevalent that you might see. And then product to sum and sum to product formulas. Um, we'll just look at those maybe briefly in class, but they're there for you. Okay, so let's try some of these. Uh, and see if we use the double angle formulas or not use the double angle formulas. So right here, this says the sine of 2u is equal to 2 times the sine of u cosine of u. Maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and prove this one first and then come back to do number 1. So let's try that. So what we see here is the sine of 2x. And what I'm going to turn that into, I'm going to use this sum angle formula to work that out. So if I have the sine, 2x is just x plus x. And so what I want to do then is I want to prove to get to this side. Well, if I plug that information into up here, I get the sine of x times the cosine of x. And so all I did was I plugged in here. So sine of u cosine of v. Well, here u and v are both the x's. So this is my u, this is my v. And then I'm going to add in the cosine of x sine of x. We just have a lot of duplicates here. And if we look at this, well, here's one of them. Here's the other one. They're the same thing. So I get two of them when I add them. So I get the two sine of x, cosine of x. So there's my proof. And so that's proving the double angle formula. And so if we take something that has the sine of two x's, I can rewrite it as this right here. Now, why I wanted to go back here is because what happens is that students forget everything that they did before. So when they see this multiple, multiple angle type of solution that they need to try to solve, what they try to use then is this double angle formula. Well, this one really doesn't work well with the double angle formula. This one, again, what we do is we say, okay, this is like the sine of theta is equal to the negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, theta then are my angles that work for this. Negative square root of 3 over 2 would be this angle and this angle. So that's my 4 pi over 3 and my 5 pi over 3. Since it's going twice as fast and I want to get them between 0 and 2 pi, I'm going to actually have four solutions. So what I need to do is add 2 pi to this one. So 2 pi would be 6 pi over 3. So I also have 10 pi over 3 and add 6 to that one. So I get 11 pi over 3. Notice I didn't use this double angle formula at all. Now, instead of theta, what I have is 2x. So 2x is equal to these things, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. And I'm just going to write this up. Divide these all by 2. And so then my final solution, x is equal to 4 pi over 6. 2 pi over 3 becomes, and then uh, 5 pi over 6. 10 makes 5 pi over 3 and 11 pi over 6. So those are my solutions right there. Notice I didn't use the double angle formula, so just be aware of that when you're solving. Now we come to the cosine. Prove the cosine. Set it up exactly like you did before. See if you can do this one. This should be pretty easy for you, possibly. But see if you can get to there. Pause and try it. So we just plugged in to the cosine function the sum angle formula here, and we get the minus in between. Don't forget that. So we get cosine squared minus sine squared. Hopefully you got that. Now, how do we get the other two formulas? What do you think? Well, this one's exclusively in terms of cosine. So what am I going to do here? 
You're right. I'm going to take the sine squared and turn it into 1 minus cosine squared. So then this would be two of these, 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Similarly, you can find this one just by replacing the cosine squared with 1 minus the sine squared. I'll let you do that. Okay, so moving on. Find the exact solutions of the equation in the interval 0 to 2 pi of this thing right here. Well, when I look at this, I can't deal with this straightforward fashion like I did for this one. So what I'm going to do is maybe change over and see if I can get something working. So I'm going to use this formula here. And I'm going to re recall this one as 2 sine of x times the cosine of x plus this other cosine of x is equal to 0. Now, if I look at it like this, I see that I got a cosine in common. So let's pull that out. And I get 2 sine of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Zero product properties tells me either that or that has to equal 0. So cosine of x equals 0 or sine of x is equal to negative 1 half. So here, x is equal to, what's that going to be, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2? We okay with that? And then over here, x, I, I always got to draw this out. So I go boom, 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 boom. So that would be 7 pi over 6, looks like, and 11 pi over 6. Are my solutions all between 0 and 2 pi? Correct. So this would be my overall answer right there. Moving on, page two. All right, let's look at this. Write a double angle formula to rewrite the equation y equals six cosine squared minus three, and then graph it. Looking at this, this isn't very good for us to graph, but if I use one of these equations, namely this one, maybe I can get it done. So I see that there's a three in common there, so I'm gonna factor it out. So I see a three, and this would be two cosine squared x minus one. And that's what my y equals. And looking at this, now I can turn this over to the cosine of 2u. So this is 3, and then this is cosine of 2 times my x. So I use the double angle formula in reverse. I have this, and I went up to this. Now this is something that I can graph. So I have an amplitude of 3. It's a cosine graph, and it's going to go twice as fast. So your period is going to be pi. So I'm looking at this. If I go out here to 2 pi, that would be two complete periods. And then here is pi, and then up here is 3, and down here is negative 3. And so I start at my high, middle, low, middle, high. So that would be one of them. And then I do the same thing again there would be two complete periods of this function right here. Go ahead to your calculator and then double check this graph. Make sure that that's how it turns out. But that helps us. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have theta. Theta is in quadrant two, and so we have a sine value that's positive, so that means our cosine value would be negative. And so let's figure these things out. Uh, what we know from before is that if we find the cosine of theta, which we should be able to do because sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to theta, but more so, this one we can write as a right triangle. This would be a 5. This would be a 13. So what's my missing side here? Most definitely, that would be a 5, 12, 13. Pythagorean triple. So if I look at my cosine of theta, that would be... Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, and since I'm in the second quadrant, it'd be negative 12 over 13. And then my tangent would also be negative. That would be the 5 over the 12. So I have these values. How does that help us? Because I want the sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, tangent of 2 theta. Well, if I want the sine of 2 theta, that's going to be equal to 2 sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So now I can just plink these values off of what I've found already or what I was given and plug them in. So this would be 2. My sine of theta is 5 over 13. And then my cosine of theta would be negative 12 over 13. Crank this out. That's 60 on top. Multiply by 2 more. That would be a 120. So this is negative 120 over 169. That would be my sine of 2 theta. Cosine of 2 theta, you could do this a couple ways. You could use uh, Pythagorean identity, 
but let's just use what we have here. So I can take any one of these formulas and put them together to figure out what's going on. And what we should do maybe figure out is, is this going to be positive or negative as well? Well, if I'm in the second quadrant here and I double it, uh, notice that we're over the halfway point here. This leg is shorter than this leg. So I'm below my 3 pi over 4 mark. So if I double this one, well, I should say this, I'm over my 3 pi over 4 mark. If I double this one, I'm going to end up over here in the fourth quadrant. If I'm in the fourth quadrant, the cosine then should be positive. My sine should be negative. Oh, look at there it is. Negative. Let's make sure that we get this one here. Uh, I'm going to use one of these. Which one? Okay, I'm going to use this one. 1 minus 2 sine squared. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I started off with the sign given to me. So I'm going to go 1 minus 2 sine squared would be 5 over 13 quantity squared. Remember we said we should get a positive value for this. This is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. So this is 1 minus 50 over 169, which should be 169 minus 50 would be 119 over 169. Is that positive? Correct, it is. Now the tangent I can do in a lot of different ways. Tangent of 2 theta. Why don't I just take the sine over the cosine here? That would be my pleasure. So that would be 119. So this would be the sine over the cosine, the 169s cancel, and then there's my third value. So you should be able to figure these things out, and they should turn out to be the right values. And remember that the tangent in this quadrant would be negative. So that did turn out okay. All right, triple angle. I don't see a triple angle formula on here, but let's try to use the double angle formula to find a triple angle formula. So going back to my sheet up here, I'm going to use the sine of 2x plus x. I'm going to split that up. And I'm going to rewrite that with this formula here. So it's the sine of 2x cosine of x. And then I got plus the cosine of 2x sine of x. All right? So that is splitting it up. So all I did was I took this 3x and I split it into two parts as such. Now if I look at this, now this piece I can use the double angle formula and this piece I can use the double angle formula. I don't have them showing. See if you remember these already. So this piece right here would be this right here. Now I took the liberty of doing this without showing you, but sine of 2x I replace with this right here. Cosine stays. Cosine of 2x, I replace that with this here, and then the sine of x stays. So let's try to simplify this one a little bit more and see what happens. So this would be 2 sine of x times the cosine squared of x. And then if I distribute the sine x here, this would be sine of x times the 1, and then minus 2 sine cubed of x. We got a bunch of stuff. What are we going to do with it? Well, how about if we get it all in terms of sine? That would be my pleasure right now. So we do this, 1 minus the sine squared of x plus sine of x minus 2 sine cubed of x. Yeah? And so now I can distribute. Double check this. That's my distribution. And now I look at common terms. So this is 2 sine of x sine of x sine cubed, sine cubed, and so I'm going to get 3 sine of x minus 4 sine cubed of x. Now the question is, is why should I stop here? Or should I stop here? Well, I am going to stop here, and one of the reasons is because I have it exclusively in terms of x, uh, sine. And so this works out for me because I have it with the sine. Now, could you rewrite this all with the cosine? Well, I think in some respects you probably could. You'd have to maybe deal with this sine a little bit. Might get a little tricky. Might I don't know how it turns off ex out exactly. But this is one example where we got it all in terms of the signs, given the signs. And so maybe that's where we want to stop with that. Okay, last example. Find all values that satisfy this equation from 0 to 2 pi. Well, if I'm looking at these things, I don't know if this comes about or what we see you know let's look at our formula sheet here a little bit 
where do we see anything like this? Well, we got a cosine squared here, but this is x over 2. I don't know about that. Oh, here's one. Here's cosine squared. Do we want that one? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, how about this one? Cosine of u over 2 is equal to this thing. Well, what happens if I square this? Is that of this form? Yeah, I think so. If I square both sides, I should be golden. In fact, these two formulas right here are pretty similar. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this right side and see if I can simplify from there. So let's leave the left side right now. 2 minus sine squared x is equal to. Now, if I look at this, that 2 is still there, cosine squared of x over 2. So that fits this formula right here, but that means i got to square both sides. So all I'm left with then is 1 plus the cosine of x, not u, but x, over 2 squared both sides here because I have cosine squared. This 2 will cancel with this 2. Oh, this is looking a little bit better. I got a sine and I got a cosine. Maybe I want to get everything in terms of cosines. So I'm going to replace this one out right here. So I substitute the sine squared just to get everything in terms of one trig function. And then now I can simplify. This becomes 2 minus 1. So this is 1, and that becomes a plus. 1 plus cosine squared is equal to 1 plus cosine of x. Well, if you look at the ones cancel, get everything to one side. People look at this one right here and they struggle. Cosine squared of x is equal to cosine of x. They want to divide both sides by the cosine. Well, when you divide both sides by the cosine, you lose solutions. Please do not do that. That's the same thing as if I have x squared is equal to x, you divide both sides by x. You lose a solution that is x equal to 0. So don't do that. Bring everything to one side. And then I can factor out a cosine. And then I get cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So either this will equal 0 or this one will equal 0. So if I finish this up, cosine x equals 0, cosine x equals 1. When is cosine of x equal to 0? Well, that's going to be either at, we already had one of those today, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And then for this one, x is equal to, when is that? Well, that's going to be at x equal to 0, isn't it? And what about pi? Do I include, oh, that's right, the cosine of x is equal to negative 1 at pi. So these are the only three solutions that we do have. You also can graph this one. And that's what I did to check because I'm doing this video. i got to make sure I do this, all this right. So I graphed this, and I made sure that these were the three solutions. And if you do graph it, the, the curves look very similar. And so you just got to be careful and see what's going on there. All right? So there we have it. We're going to use the uh, double angle formula, maybe the half angle formula, to solve some of these problems. I hope this helps you. And this is section... 5.5. Have a great day.